Angkor, the glory of the Khmer Empire which existed a century ago. The mysterious temples cannot be described with and explained by modern science. Without use of glue, without any anchor. The Angkor Ruins is the world of gods on Earth. However, now... We have to find the original place and the original stone from the scattering stone. Angkor is being revived. We are conserving both the things, tree and the structure here. Now Angkor is trying to bring its glory back. Cambodia, a country located in the southern portion of the Indo-Chinese Peninsula. The land was hidden from the modern world for a long time. Therefore, it still possesses its purity. The West calls Cambodia an unknown territory or the country of mystery due to the Khmer civilization, which had been left undiscovered for a long time. In northeastern Cambodia, a myth hidden in the jungle, was awoken from its slumber in 1960. Those temples were so beautiful that even the natives believed that gods built them. Angkor is where the Khmers, since the 9th century, lived and prospered for 600 years. Each Khmer king built one or two temples during his reign. The kings believed in Hinduism and built temples dedicated to their god. By building those temples, the kings wanted to become god. And they brought the public together in the name of god. Construction of the temples took place during the king's reign, and it is expected that some tens of thousands of people were used for the construction. Bayan stands at the center of Angkor Thom. The bas reliefs at this temple depict the process of building the temple at the time. The stones, each weighing several tons, were cut by human hands. Then they were carried by elephants and via the canal. People then grinded the stones and piled them together. Construction of the Khmer ancient. The construction techniques that were used to build these Khmer temples are extraordinary. It really surprised me when I first started the project. Uh, the stones were piled up without the use of glue or anchors. The people just built up the stones layer by layer. Once architects finished piling up the stones, the greatest artists of the time gathered. The artists then decorated the walls of the temples with the stories of their gods. People have discovered some 91 sites of the Angkor ruins up to now. We don't know the exact number of the temples in the Angkor area because we have not explored the region entirely. Some are virtually ruined, leaving only some remains on hills. However, the Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts in Cambodia will register the sites if they can still be traced. We cannot say for sure if the process of such register has been completed. Angkor Wat, the home of gods. Angkor Wat is the first to see the sunrise 
just like the Khmers, who wished to be the first to meet the gods. Angkor Wat is the biggest temple in the Angkor region. With a span of 1.5 kilometers east to west, 1.3 kilometers north to south, and 65 meters in height, the temple is comprised of approximately 1,200 works of stone masonry. Moreover, it only took 34 years to build this colossal site. This is not even possible with modern technology. And that is why this site is regarded as one of the seven wonders of the world. Angkor Wat was built by King Suryavarman II. The king who wanted to build the greatest temple in history only built Angkor Wat during his reign. Angkor Wat is the largest and arguably the most beautiful Khmer temple. This temple was built by King Suryavarman II in the 12th century and dedicated to God Vishnu. Angkor Wat is a symbol of Cambodia. It even appears on the country's national flag. However, because of the long war, some ruins collapsed while some were looted. And Angkor Wat is not the only temple that was damaged. The same thing happened to the other temples as well. In 1993, 10 member states of the UN, including Japan and France, decided to restore the Angkor ruins. However, the result of the restoration work was not as pleasant as expected. This was because the work was carried out without an understanding of the architectural techniques utilized when the sites were first constructed a thousand years ago. The Angkor area. The Angkor area had been abandoned for a long time. Consequently, there are not many documents of the ruins. And this comes as a huge challenge when restoring the ruins. No one can confirm the original look and shapes of the temple because we have nothing that we can refer to. Continuous efforts to restore the Angkor ruins have been made. The 18 countries known to have the best restoration techniques participated in the restoration process. A one-hour drive away from central Siem Reap. Pante Sre is the most remote temple among the Angkor ruins. Pante Sre is famous for its delicate bas reliefs carved on the red sandstone. Built in 967, this temple is widely recognized as one of the most beautiful of the Angkor ruins. The temple is especially famous for its delicate sculptures. They are more delicate than what can be produced with the newest technique of today. This temple was dedicated to the Hindu god Shiva because Hinduism was the religion practiced at the time. Bhante Sri is famous for its superior artistic qualities. However, because this temple is located far away from the center, the site had been neglected for a long time resulting in a greater amount of damage. Then in 1931, the experts tried out a very important restoration technique at Bante Sre.
It was an astylosis, and Bantes Ray is the first to benefit from the use of the technique. Anastylosis is a reconstruction technique whereby a ruined property is restored, using the original architectural elements to the greatest degree possible. This technique is now being used to restore the entire Angkor ruins. In, 1930, in the 1930s, the conservator of this temple, Angli Marshar, went to Java, Indonesia, to learn a new technique from the Dutch technicians to restore Bante Shrai. This technique is called anastylosis, which is to dismantle and to rebuild everything using the original materials. However, if some parts are missing, we use newer and modern elements. The use of anastylosis was highly effective, and Bante Sre is regarded as one of the best restored temples. However, the parts that were destroyed during the war and damaged by humans are gone forever. Bayon stands at the center of the grand city, Angkor Thom. There are more than 200 face towers at the site, and those face towers are called the Smile of Angkor. Tens of thousands of people visit the temple every day, and the restoration work is actively taking place. The researching of stones, which is the most important aspect of the restoration, is being conducted at Bayon. We have to research about the... We have to conduct research on the quality of the stones that we want to restore and conserve. Therefore, when there are some parts or areas we want to restore, we must go to the site to figure out exactly what happened, what we can do to conserve and restore the damaged parts, and what materials we can use to restore the parts in danger. We have to carry out our research properly and test our solutions before actually applying them to the ruins in order to avoid uh, mistakes. Analyzing the stones used to build the temples as well as finding and utilizing similar stones are the most important factors when it comes to carrying out restoration work. However, more important is finding the original places of the collapsed and scattered stones. In the past, when the restoration work first took place, there were many scattered stones around the outer gallery. The restorers try to position these scattered stones back into their original places, but some stones were placed incorrectly. Therefore, we are now trying to ascertain the correct placement and location for these stones. The original place. The temples collapsed and the parts were scattered which made it hard to recognize how they were originally used. Some were even broken into several pieces. To resolve it, a new technique was adapted. It was 3D laser scanning. Utilizing the newest technique, the restorers could figure out where the scattered stones were originally placed. New materials, which have similar qualities to the original elements, are added to fill the missing part. We have a team to research. We have a team that researches the query for new stones, 
such as sandstone and laterite, we try to find new materials that have similar qualities to the original stones, such as texture and color, and we use them to fill some parts. However, we try to limit its use to structural issues. We only use new materials to ensure the stability of the structure, so the use is limited. It's a limited. Utilizing the original stones is very important when carrying out restoration work. Tapram, a temple that coexists with nature. Intertwined with the trees, this temple is famous for its imposing expression. However, at the back of the imposing Tapram, there is a temple which collapsed after the war and due to looting. The restorers on this site try their best to use the original stones. This is our methodology to join the broken stones. While joining, we are utilizing 99% original stones. Only few percent, one or two percent stones we are adding, which are not available on the site. The restorers drill the broken stones, insert a steel knob, and fill the hole. This knob acts as the spine of the stone. This is how the restorers bond the broken parts together. After that, they put the stones back in their original places. This is how the third enclosure gallery on the eastern side of the south wing of Taprum was restored. For conservation, we try to maintain authenticity. We have to use the original materials to restore damaged parts because conservation efforts are meant to preserve the authenticity of ruins. We don't want to add anything new, and I don't think tourists come to Cambodia to see something new either. They want to see the ancient Cambodian ruins, so we have to be very careful and do extensive research before we act. And the original building. To protect the temples, the glory of the Khmer kings, modern scientists continue to research extensively. The rainy season has begun in the Angkor area. Most of the average annual precipitation falls during the rainy season. Phnom Bakeng the temple located on Bakeng Mountain. This is the first mountain-style temple built in the area. The central sanctuary, located at the top of the temple, is famous for its splendid sculptures on the walls as well as the guards.
Water presents a great challenge when it comes to restoring Phnom Bakeng, as it was built on the mountain. When the, the laterite started to decay, when the laterite started to decay, water went into the walls and pushed the soil out of the walls. Also, plants grew on the soil on the inside. Thus, the roots of the trees pushed against the walls even more. Uh, causing the More collapse of the of temple. The ball and make the ball collapse. Until very recently, Phnom Bakeng and Bakeng Mountain were in danger of collapsing because of rainwater. <laughs> When it rained, rainwater went into the wall and pushed the soil out. As a result, the hallowed temple begins to slowly collapse. The restorers piled up the stones, filled the hole with soil, and then installed a waterproofing system to block rainwater. The restorers adapted a waterproofing system which is usually used when constructing a house. Now rainwater no longer affects the temple or causes damage to the temple. Water can also cause water can change the site because it affects trees and the growth of trees. The mountain is the foundation of the temple which is surrounded by trees. Therefore, if the trees disappear, water will wash away the soil. So, if the mountain is gone, you can imagine what will happen to the temple. In fact, water is very important regarding the restoration of all the temples. The Angkor temples have one thing in common. They all are surrounded by moats. The moats play a crucial role in preserving the temples because the areas where the Angkor ruins are located is a swamp area where it is impossible to build anything on. In Siem Reap, the soil is, in Siem Reap, the soil is very soft and can support a heavy load such as this temple. So, at that time, I'm sure our ancestors had the experience. If you go to the beach, uh, if you walk where the sand is wet, it is very hard. But uh, where the sand is dry, it is very soft, so you will sink. So, it proves that our ancestors knew how to utilize natural resources. So, our ancestors first replaced the soil with sand instead and connected it with the groundwater. And as you can see, the groundwater is very close to the surface here. Angkor Wat is encircled by a massive 200 meter wide moat, the biggest moat among all the Angkor temples. This was necessary to bear the load coming from the colossal temple that measures 1.5 kilometers east to west and 1.3 kilometers north to south. However, the volume of water in the moat recently started to decrease due to the increased number of tourists every year and the rapidly growing population of the whole region. Thus, the demand for water has been drastically increasing. The experts look at this situation with great interest. The village is located on lower ground than the temple. Therefore, when the citizens use water, the water level of the moat decreases and puts the temple in danger of collapsing. We're looking in detail 
And we always find signs of the evolution of the Khmer techniques used in ancient times. They were thinking about sustaining and the involvement of the Angkor region at that time. Khmer ancestors were really thinking about the future problems that could occur in the region. They had all the systems to prevent drought or flooding in this area. A century ago, the Khmers constructed a canal so that water from Kulen Mountain flows around the temples. Utilizing the moats, the water keeps the sand wet and holds up the temples. The great city Angkor Thom, where each wall is 3.3 kilometers long, has both a moat and a reservoir in order to maintain stability. When the level of water decreases, the water from the reservoir flows into the moat. The water from the Angkor Thom moat is delivered to Angkor Wat through a canal. This canal is about one kilometer long. The water from this canal fills the Angkor Wat moat. The fact that the canals around the Angkor ruins are all connected was discovered by researchers recently. The researchers are now seeking ways to secure the water supply and maintain the stability of the temples using this canal. We, are really we really have to be careful about the use of water in the city. So we'd like to ask the citizens to try and reduce the use of the groundwater. We need the community restaurants, hotels, and everyone to conserve and reuse water as much as possible. Thus, the citizens can participate in not only the preservation of the groundwater, but also the preservation of our heritage. We can say that this system will help preserve the temples forever. While the other temples were collapsing because of water shortages, Bante Sre faced a challenge for the opposite reason. The reason is that the temple is surrounded by swamps. The height of Bante Sre is equal to the water level of the temple. So during the rainy season, the water level of the swamp rises up and the temple floods as a consequence. The most important thing The in biggest problem in Bante Sre was water. water. When it rained, it flooded. It rained, Therefore, it the Swiss the and Cambodian teams of and the Apsara Authority dismantled the stones and repaired the drainage system in order to allow rainwater to flow into the moat outside. The restorers dismantled the floor and installed a drainage system that can bear the annual average precipitation. Rainwater now flows into the moat outside and no longer causes floods. Bante Sre received benefits from various modern techniques and is regarded as a well-restored temple in a relative sense. However, there are some parts that cannot be restored, even if we apply the newest techniques. It is the sculptures. As you see, Bhante Shre has a very... As you see, the quality, quality of restoration that Bhante Shre received was excellent. However, some sculptures are still left damaged because it's impossible to restore sculptures. 
Restaurants sometimes carve new stones to recreate some missing parts, but we can only restore the structure. But sculpture is not possible. All the restorers struggle over one thing. That is, whether to restore the temples to how they looked a thousand years ago or conserve their present conditions. The statue that guards Angkor Thom was restored with new stones as well as stone dust to fill the holes. The restorers spare no effort to restore the ruins. For my team, using the original stones is very important. When people see us work on the site, many of them ask us why there is nothing new. It is because conservation means to maintain the present conditions. We try not to change any of the original forms or the stones. Moreover, we use chemical injections to treat some of the stones if they are very weak, just like we use on human bodies. This is why I say that we are stone doctors. Still, the restorers try to use the original stones to the greatest degree possible. However, using the original stones is in fact a huge challenge. Finding the original positioning of the stones requires a lot of time and efforts. Moreover, the structure of these old stones is very weak because it is void of the iron which came out of the stone. As a result, the restorers insert a steel knob to prevent the stones from shattering and use adhesive that doesn't harm the stones. This kind of monument is a historical document for the Khmer people, for the next generation, for now and for the next generation. And the restoration program and process destroys sometimes, not always, but destroys sometimes some ar 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 archaeological information. So this kind of temple is like a book, historical book. We don't have so much uh, text during the, uh, from the Angkorian period. We have some inscription inside the temple that is linked with the cult and not so much about the daily life and so on. But finally, we don't have so much information about the Khmer civilization. So we have uh, just the temple. So restoration and conservation is not just the geometry of the temple. It means also to care on this monument heritage as a historical document. Now, the most important aspect regarding the conservation of the Angkor ruins is maintaining their present condition as long as possible. Vehicles constantly travel to and from the historical site to carry out the restoration work and for survival. This was inevitable because of the poor road conditions in the area. The trucks, which were used to carry out the restoration work, constantly caused damage to the temples and threatened the safety of the local residents as well as the tourists. Therefore, a new road to divert traffic was urgently needed. In 2010, a new road was constructed in the Angkor region, the Korean Ring Road. This is the contribution of Koika, a South Korean government-run overseas volunteer program. Also, now there is an overloaded vehicle checkpoint. Therefore, 
overloaded vehicles are no longer allowed access to the historical site. The Korean Ring Road greatly helps ease the traffic. Visitors no longer have to travel along the congested street in the temple area, experiencing delays. They can use the detour, which is not as busy as the old streets. This road is also greatly beneficial for the local residents as it provides more options when traveling. In addition, using this road, visitors can go to Bente Shre without having to cross Angkor Wat and the Bayan. The Korean Ring Road protects both the home of the gods and the living foundation of Cambodians. Around the road, there is something that grabs our attention. It's the solar street lamps. These street lamps were constructed by a Korean company courtesy of Koika. Actually, solar street lamps have no direct function to protect cultural heritage. They are lighting facilities to make secure certain areas or roads by bringing in the reduction of traffic accidents and crime rates. We think Angkor Wat, if Angkor Wat has more infrastructures like solar seat lamps, there will be more tourists who will come to see Angkor Wat. The benefit of having the solar lighting is great in the areas. We set them up because most of these places don't have electricity yet. So at night, it becomes very dark and the solar lighting helps illuminate those areas. It also contributes to promoting the preservation of the environment because the use of solar power doesn't have a negative impact, only benefits. When the village is illuminated, it becomes very beautiful at night. When darkness descends, all the tourists leave the site while some lights illuminate the site. Early in the morning, Numerous tourists come to Cambodia to see the beautiful monuments. Unfortunately, tourists unintentionally damage the temples. It is part of history, but we also have to protect the ruins from future damage. reason, the number of tourists going up to the third level of Angkor Wat has been regulated for some time. In year 2000, when, when we started our restoration work in 2000, we noticed that there were too many people going into the central shrine of Panti Shrai, touching the carvings and damaging the temple. During the off-peak season, there were about 500 to 700 people visiting the temple per day. But, in the but during the peak time, season, about 5,000 to 7,000 people visited the site per day. About five to 7,000. Bante Sre, which had many visitors, took measures to protect the temple from visitors. As a means, a visitor center was constructed in order to have better control of the number of tourists and provide visitors with more conveniences. We noticed that the minimum stay. We noticed that tourists need at least 35 minutes to look around the temple. 
So we created tourist programs ranging from 45 to 55 minutes to more than an hour long, and also built an interpretation center for them. So tourists can learn about the history of the temple, the styles of the sculptures, and the stories that each sculpture tells, and the process of restoring the temple. In June of 2013, the session of the World Heritage Committee was held in Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia. This meeting was held to seek ways to protect the Angkor ruins. Currently, 27 teams from 18 countries are taking part in protecting the Angkor region investing over $200 million. In this meeting, Korea also signed an MOU with Cambodia and began taking measures to restore the Angkor region. The Cambodian government asked Korea to restore Priya Pitu. We prioritized based on their request and referenced the fact that the majority of architectural heritages in Korea are stone properties, like the Angkor ruins. Therefore, we decided to take part in restoring Priya Pitu. Korea will be in charge of restoring Priya Pitu. This temple is located in Angkor Thom and was built in around the 12th century. The temple is made up of five temples, dedicated to different gods and designed by different people at different times. The MOU that we have recently signed between the Apsara Authority and the Cultural Heritage Administration of Korea specifies the cooperation of research and culture that aims to preserve the temples for the future. It is a wide-ranging process that involves the studies, research, and the preservation of the temples. Taprom a temple that coexists with nature inside the jungle. Because of the beautiful appearance of the coexistence of trees and the temple, Taprum served as the background to the movie Tomb Raider. However, the merging of the trees with the temple resulted in the damaging of the structure. However, the trees have been coexisting with the temple for a long time, and the trees cannot be removed for restoration. If you see here how the tree roots cover the structure, if we remove that uh, structure, the tree will collapse, and if we remove the tree root, the structure will be collapsed. Both the things at present need the uh, conservation and preservation to live for long period. So we are applying the nutrients, also we are repairing the decayed part of the tree root, tree uh, branches and also giving nutrients to improvement in their health. These trees are now part of Tapram and playing a role of resurrecting the temple by providing protection and structure. The parts of the temple that were not backed up by the trees collapsed after being looted. The kings made this temple. King Jayavarman VII built this temple for his mother, so it was richly decorated. However, when the capital of the country changed from Siem Reap to Phnom Penh, 
A result was this area was totally neglected. Consequently, people started stealing valuable pieces and destroyed the temple. The important thing that we have to be aware of is that the main cause of damage to the Angkor ruins is from humans. The Angkor ruins have been carrying on the glorious civilization of the Khmers. However, because of nature, the war, and the selfishness of people, the ruins have lost their luster. However, now, people from all over the world try to protect the ruins. Now Angkor is looking to revive and rediscover the glory of the Khmer Empire that shone brightly a thousand years ago.